uh, in this revision video, we're going to take a look just for a couple of minutes at the market mechanism. Uh, we'll think about a shift in demand leading to a change in market price and a movement along the supply curve. And then how a shift in supply leads to changing prices and a movement along the demand curve. So the revision technique for those of you getting stuck into your market mechanism economics, the economics of supply and demand, uh, is summarized by three words, shift, price, movement, shift, price, movement, how changes in equilibrium prices affect quantities traded. Now we'll take two examples in this session. Our, our sort of uh, go-to example is the market for oil, the supply of oil from, for example, the major crude oil extracting countries and companies. And the demand for oil, of course, is derived from the uses to which oil is put, many uses, in, including in transport, in manufacturing processes, in heating and energy uh, provision, etc. So there's an equilibrium price in the market. The market clearing price in this situation is P1. If the price was P2, if the price was above equilibrium, then we tend to end up with a surplus of supply over demand. You see at high prices, there's a, an incentive for suppliers to increase or expand their supply to make a higher profit. Equally, at high prices, consumers have an incentive perhaps to cut back or rein back on their oil consumption. So typically high prices, P2 is an example, would lead to a disequilibrium with surplus supply. Equally, if the price was very low, if the price of oil being traded was P2, uh, then there would be a, a relatively high level of demand. People would be thinking, well, oil is a relatively cheap source of energy, for example. Uh, and also at low prices, of course, there's less incentive, less commercial incentive to extract oil because you're getting a low price in terms of US dollars per barrel. So P1 is the equilibrium market clearing price. Let's take two uh, examples. So one would be a shift in demand. I'm going to assume here that the global demand for oil shifts out from D1, demand one, to demand two, an outward shift in demand. And one proximate cause could be that the world economy starts to grow more quickly, perhaps on the back of a recovery from the pandemic. Now, an outward shift in demand leads to, there's a shift in demand, that's going to lead to a change in price and a movement along the supply curve. So a shift in demand causes a change in the market price, which then also brings about a movement along the supply curve. As demand shifts out from D1 to D2, the equilibrium price rises from P1 to P2. And as a result of that, there is a greater incentive for suppliers to perhaps step on the gas a bit uh, increase the current production of oil to meet that higher level of demand. So an outward shift of demand causes a price change and a movement along, upwards in this case, up the supply curve, an expansion of supply. Outward shift of demand increases representative of an increased willingness and ability to buy oil. The market can now sustain a higher price. And this higher price is an incentive for firms, in this case crude oil suppliers, perhaps to expand their production, and supply will respond if there is spare capacity. That, uh, those of you who've done elasticity of supply will know that the level of spare capacity determines the elasticity of supply. Do you have the spare factor resources to be able to expand production? Now, if the quantity was fixed at Q1, if there wasn't an expansion of supply, if supply did not respond at all to an increase in demand, if the quantity was fixed at Q1, then the price would climb even higher, as you can see, because there's a level of demand that is willing and able to pay a much higher price than P2 for the quantity Q1. So a shift in demand means that at the same price, consumers wish to buy more, are willing and able to buy more. A movement along the demand curve, however, follow, occurs following a change in the price. And that's nearly always caused by a shift in the supply curve. So let's think about that one. Here's our initial equilibrium. Market price is P1 and the market clearing quantity is Q1. I'm going to shift the supply to the left, otherwise known as an inward shift in oil supply. Perhaps there's been some production breakdowns, perhaps there's been some political unrest in oil producing countries, perhaps the 
uh, technology has broken down and, and there's been a, perhaps even the oil cartel decides deliberately to limit current supply of oil. So supply has shifted to the left from supply one to supply two. Well, in theory, that leads to that shift in supply leads to a price change and then a movement along the demand curve. Shift, price, movement. Shift, price, movement. The market price increases to P2. And the quantity traded uh, will contract. So at higher prices, there's less uh, incentive. In fact, it's costly to keep, uh, keep consuming the same amount of oil at a higher price. So a change in the price causes a movement along the demand curve. This time caused by a number of shifts of supply. Of course, it could go the other way. The supply could shift outwards. Uh, so it could either be a contraction of demand, as shown, or an expansion or extension of demand uh, if the supply had shifted outwards. So with an inward shift of supply, there's a scarcity of oil on the market relative to current demand. And that allows the sellers of oil to charge a higher price per barrel. The higher price itself is a signal in the market for consumers to find ways of cutting their demand. And therefore, a higher price causes a movement up or a contraction up the demand curve. So an inward shift of supply means at the same price, suppliers are less willing and able to sell. A movement along the supply curve occurs following a change in price. So one way of thinking about this, I mean, some people, some students often say, well, does a shift in supply cause a shift in demand? I mean, it could in theory, people might find if the price stayed high, people might find uh, uh, cost innovations new technologies which use less oil, for example. So there could be a shift in demand if there was a significant permanent rise in the price. But ordinarily, a shift in either supply or demand causes a change in price, which then causes a movement in the other curve which hasn't shifted. And this is quite important when you try to use this basic introductory analysis as part of your economics. Shift, price, movement, if that made sense, that's great. And hopefully that will help uh, cement your understanding of this of this key topic. Okay, thank you.